Hello, hip vlogsters. I have to apologize. I'm a day late. There was a sudden change in plans, and suddenly I was very busy all of a sudden. Anyways, I ended my last time video with uh, perception, like time perception, how we perceive time and how others perceive time, and how they don't really always match up. So, I'm going to start off by telling how Einstein describes simultaneous events while in motion to someone, or to someone in motion, some events appear simultaneously, but to others that are standing still, the events don't appear simultaneous. Now, what this means is that we can have a whole bunch of people walking around uh, in their own timelines, essentially, and we just kind of interact with them when they intersect. Kind of confusing. Now, that doesn't this doesn't mean that everyone's traveling around in their own time dimension through space and all the other dimensions. What it means is that we all perceive time differently. There's this thing called brain time, and you might not know of it, but I'm, I can swear you've experienced it. Brain time is very common in people that get really involved in subjects like reading books, playing video games, or just doing something you really like. And what it is, is you get so involved in activity that you feel like time is passing really, really slowly, but it's actually really flying by. And there's an expression, you know, time flies when you're having fun. And it really comes down to that. We just, we feel that time is passing faster or slower than it actually is. And that's what brain time is, really. So what this means is that given two people and a 30 second time span, one might experience this time span in, in only 10 seconds, while the other it might feel like 90 seconds. So all of these brain times exist in our head at the same time, we just choose which one to believe at a certain time. That sounded really confusing. What it means is we have a bazillion different time clocks in our head. We just perceive which one is more accurate. So in that 30 seconds, we might say, oh yeah, that definitely felt like 30 seconds. Or we'll be like, no, that couldn't have been 30 seconds, that was only 10 seconds. Or it's like, man, that took forever, that was like 90 seconds. So we have all these brain clocks running, running continuously in our head, and we just pick which one we want to perceive at the given time. Which goes back to what I said earlier about how everyone kind of exists in their own timeline, and we all just kind of intersect when we choose to. And that comes down to saying that when one person experiences a 30 minute, 30 second time lapse in 10 seconds and a 30, uh, 30 second time lapse in 90 seconds, that it really comes to, down to that. So it's like, so someone, when, when people say that they've had a long day, they just feel like their day has been longer than it actually has, and that affects them in certain ways. And hopefully that was kind of me discussing perspectives of time without being too confusing. Moving on. The next thing I wanted to talk about was this theory that time stops inside of a black hole. Now, we already know that time and gravity don't really like to play well together. But this really gets exaggerated in the case of a black hole. What, it, what happens is the gravitational pull of the black hole is so strong that not even light escapes. And that means if light can't escape, time can't really escape either. So what happens is mm, there's this... There's this limit, I suppose. There's this section called the event horizon, you've probably heard of it, of a black hole. And at that point, that is the point of no return. Nothing escapes from a black hole once it's past the event, event horizon. Not even time. Now, you can think of time like your headphones and your pocket as a black hole. If you just put your headphones in your pocket, when you pull it out, it's going to be all tangled. And that's pretty much what happens to time in a black hole. It gets sucked in there and never really comes back. Now that sounds a little bit confusing and you're like, what? But to briefly explain, maybe not so briefly, but to explain, it's, let's say there is someone that survived beyond the event horizon. If we're standing outside of a black hole looking in, it would appear like they, did, uh, they that they would eventually be slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. Eventually they come to a stop and cease to us, cease to age. And what that means is that we just can't Time, time has reached the point where it can no longer escape and we can't see them aging anymore. Now, to the person inside the black hole, because uh, the gravity is so strong, saying that they're still alive, gravity is so strong that it's sucking light and time in at such a great rate that it would seem that the world outside the black hole is traveling around really, 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 really fast. 
Now, let's say that you're in the black hole and you manage to somehow escape and you get out. Well, what would have happened is the universe outside the black hole had rapidly progressed in time than what you thought it had. So this is kind of like a foolproof plan of time travel, except black holes about the size of tennis balls and there's no way to escape. Sorry. Moving on to my last and final subject of this video. One day, time may stop. Now there's a proverb that goes, time waits for no man. And while it can get sometimes wonky and weird, that's generally too. It just keeps this steady beat and keeps going. But it might not always be like that. See, to understand our universe, we come up with these formulas. But the formulas are all based off of probabilities, which are also based off of time space or space time. And that's another subject. But we assume that space-time is infinite, which never stops, always going huge and massive. Well, on the universal scale, what that says on the universal scale is that the mail arriving on time, your package being what you thought it is, and the sun exploding all have the same probability of happening. But we all know that's not true. So working around with this, the best we could come up with was time is an infinite. That's a pretty scary thought, in a sense. Four out of five theories and probabilities and calculations is that time will end in 3.3 to 3.7 billion years from now. Approximately, give or take several point something billion years. The fifth is that time will end right now. Whew. So, thinking of this in a big scale, what it really means is that we live in a universe and reality that's like an old pocket watch. It's slowly winding down until it eventually just stops. But that's not years from now. Billions and billions of years. Surely we'll see it coming. Maybe not, actually. Because what will happen is, just like the black hole and the event horizon, what will happen is, as we get closer and closer and closer, Time will eventually slow down and slow down and slow down until it eventually stops. And we won't see it coming because we'll be in it. We'll be, we'll be experiencing it. And even though it, it's just like that brain clock, we'll be, even though time is slowing down, we'll think it's the same. And that's what's so scary because eventually time will just stop. And then what? What will happen once time stops? Everything will work and then suddenly it won't. It'll be frozen. We'll all be frozen in time and space. But this is just a theory, and I just like talking about time. Anyways, I enjoyed talking about time, and I hope you guys enjoyed listening to me talk about time and just kind of thought about what I said. Anyways, I will have my stuff together next Thursday. James, I'll see you today. Danielle, I'll see you Saturday. Brandon on Tuesday for everyone else. Until next time. Also, 348 days till Christmas. Don't forget. So I'm going to start off with talking about Einstein and how he describes that si uh, events that happen simultaneously while two people... Mm, this is hard to describe.